And since we talk about super telephoto lenses, I have to warn you. Telephoto lenses are what you need for wildlife, but sometimes, with distance, things are not working that well. And one of the reasons is heat diffraction. None of the pictures you just saw of that flying pigeon are sharp. Because I am in town, shooting from the window in the evening. So you have the road, ton of concrete and all the air conditioning around. Those are the pigeons that I shot one year ago in town as well, 7-8 meters distance in the morning with the first ray of light. Do you spot a difference? Despite the lack of quality, I had a lot of fun with those pigeons. Here are some taken with the RF100-400 the next morning. Even though we have only half the reach, we have a better quality overall. So keep in mind that heat haze can occur near sandy areas, close to concrete, roads or pond of water. And try to get as close as you can. I got also that little one from the window. The RF800 at the lake first, in the evening, with egrets a bit far and over a pond of water. So, but it's not too bad. However, later for sure I'll show you better images taken with the RF800. Nothing mind blowing here, just uh, okay stuff. But here again the conditions are not optimum. So one of the downside of the RF800 F11 is that you cannot zoom out to find the bird and sometimes you just cannot find it, or you miss, because the focus was not on the target. One thing that may help in that case is that you focus on a tree at a reasonable distance, at around 30 meters for example, and you do not touch anything until you find your bird in flight. Once it is in the frame, you can go ahead and push the AF button. Now at the beach with the RF800, where I didn't have much of atmospheric problem. Here is one of the many beach dogs at 100 meter. A very decent picture regarding the image quality at that distance. Here we have a sunset with trees at 100 meters, a beach house at 500 meters and a boat at 100 meters. No major problems, the branches look fine regarding to the extreme situation. No chromatic aberration here. The house looks fine as well. Another downside of the RF800 F11 is the 6 meter minimum focus distance. It can be very frustrating. Here I have the birds too close to me at 5 meters. So I could take a very detailed photo with any other telephoto lens because it is so close. But here I can't. And we know that if I move back, they will just fly away. And this is exactly what happened. Of course I had to try. Then I was hiding here, meaning I was squatting. And first I heard his beak knocking on the wood. Then I saw it. For once I did not panic. By default I am in zone AF. So I clicked the quick menu 
push one time the right button on the D-pad to activate the single point AF, click the back button to exit the quick menu, turn the wheel to lower the shutter speed at 1 over 250th of a second, focus on his head and took 18 photo in burst mode. The six first are blurred and he was gone. All this happened under 10 seconds. This is a greater flame back woodpecker. Just a cool bird. I'm very happy I got this shot. Here is the original picture. It is over there that I found a threatened Chinese egret. And the light was beautiful just one hour before sunset. I think it's a Chinese egret because she was hunting alone and she has those greenish and black legs. An amazing hunter, very active. She was eating something every two minutes. Here you can see the fish in his mouth. Here she has another fish. And she dropped it for some reason. Now look how close I can crop with a good light and no atmospheric disturbance. Around the same place I got also that little mangrove heron or striated heron. He didn't stay that long, he saw me and played it safe, flying back on a mangrove tree. Something interesting to mention is that the image stabilization is good enough so that in low light situation, like here, with this dog, you can go in burst mode as low as 1 over 50th of a second and then you can pick up the best image. And it's the same with the RF100 to 400. On that one he saw me and he was furious that I took photos without permission. My best strategy was to sit here and be quiet. I had five or six trees around me with not too much leaves on them, all between 10 meters to 25 meters. I could even rest my arms on my knees while filming and shooting. My plan works well. Every few minutes I had a target. Let's start at the lake. I will not hide you that between the 800 and the 100 to 400, I very much prefer to have the 100 to 400 attached to my R7. So it's just more fun simply because it's more versatile and I don't shoot only wildlife. You want to frame the bridge in the other side of the lake? No problem. Banana plant at 10 meters, clouds, Cute dogs at 10 meters, no problem. A dog trying to blink an eyes, easy. 
Water lily leaf. Close up of flowers. Insect close up. Dragonflies. And macro photography if you use some gadget like a reverse mount adapter, some extension tubes, or in my case, the Rhinox DCR250. And let's jump back to the ocean to talk a little bit about macro with the Rhinox clipped to my RF100 to 400. As you may know, I usually do my macro photography with a Laowa 65mm ultra macro from Venus Optics. Very small, light, sharp, cool, and smooth uh, focus ring, and super versatile. I have a review about that lens. Now I tested again during a few hours the RF100-400 with that Rhinox and I must tell you that I cannot reach the same quality than with my Laowa. It could be that my ISO is higher in some cases. It could be that my shutter speed is too low at 1 over 400 of a second. It could simply be that adding a Rhinox is pushing too much the limits of that lens that is not intended to do macro at all. And so we may have a huge problem of diffraction. Maybe a flash could have helped. All the images I took uh, seem soft to me. And that depth of field is so shallow. This one is actually the sharpest one, I think. It's a 15 stacks at 100mm, f5.6, ISO 650, shutter speed is at 1 over 400 of a second. So here just a little comparison. Here we have an hibiscus at f16 and here at f8. And you can see that the background is a little bit better. This is a beach morning glory, a red paper wasp, and Jason the coconut. I tried different angles of Jason the coconut. Tell me in the comment which one is your favorite. I prefer the number one. Now let me show you a few other pictures that would not have been possible with the RF800 because of how it's framed or because there are moments in time and I'll share also the rest of the birds that I got with the RF100-400.
almost forgot to show you this is the not so good picture i took in macro mode with a very low shutter speed of one over one hundredth of a second so i knew something was wrong and i pushed the emergency video button and yeah so this is a palawan water monitor if i'm not wrong in slow motion at 180p which is better than nothing this is endemic to the Philippines. It can grow up to 2 meters long. This is a baby, I think, of 65 centimeters maybe. It swims uh, very well. So when I say cheap, I mean not 16,000 US dollar. But less than 3,000 US dollar for the two lens with RR7 less than 2500 US dollar with an R10 or even less than 2000 paired with the R50 and I saw the reviews of Johnny Pink about the R50 and the RF100 to 400 and I can tell you that the photos are great go check out the link in the description below and see by yourself and when I say fun I mean lightweight, compact with good image stabilization, versatile, with good image quality and hopefully you saw those two lenses will cover everything from macro to distant small birds. You saw that the 100 to 400 is very sharp. I think my copy of the 800 is lacking a bit of sharpness, however, you saw that with a good light and no atmospheric problems, the results are good. All right. Give me a like. Cheers.